if there is a bet on one particular strategy that's going to end up winning on a longer term because it is a bit too early to say how exactly things are going to play out. It's tough to say what exactly is going to happen next year. We're talking about five years out and how the business models are going to play out. Having, having said that, a couple of things uh, that, you know, when we look at the companies, few few things that we try to focus on that we think can create a long-term sustainable competitive advantage. Number one, if you build scale in a difficult time, it gives you pricing and a procurement leverage, which is going to be a huge competitive advantage, even though you were just solely focusing on one segment of the value chain, such as QCell and SunTech. SunPower's business model by buying PowerLite, they've clearly, uh, you know, clearly positioned themselves to sort of not just grow, but also facilitate the growth of the market by being closer to the customer. And on top of that, they'll figure out a way to have a transfer pricing so they can absorb a much significant cost reduction on the module level as well as the system level by having vertically integrated model and a transfer pricing and therefore having a very gross margin profile and maybe some. And at the same time, we cannot overlook some of the downstream players who naturally are going to be a beneficiary in an environment that there is a short-lived module excess supply. Their margins and profit opportunity are probably going to look better vis-a-vis -vis folks like uh, Sun Edison or the Connergy Global.